Hey, it is Gary Carpenter with Master Real Estate Academy, and chances are you have finished up session three um, in the production program, and we covered marketability checklist. So I want to go over it in just a little bit more detail, and also for you to have an individual um, uh, video that you can reference um, to be able to go through the marketability checklist. So let's jump in. So marketability checklist list is a bird's eye view of the factors that will cause a home to either sell or not sell. It will help you pinpoint exactly why your home didn't sell and avoid making the same mistake twice. Would something like that be a value? So the marketability checklist in uh, traditionally has been a great tool to use for an expired listing. So a canceled right? So if you call on an expired listing, again, the major thing that you're going to focus on with them is do they still want to sell their home? Not do you want to list your home? They don't want to list their home. They just had their house on the market for 60, 90, 120, 180 days. They're extremely disappointed that they didn't get their house sold. They got hooked up with the wrong real estate agent, gave them, the, gave them bad advice, didn't talk to them about any price predictions, and didn't talk to them about all the ingredients that go into a marketability checklist, which makes their house marketable. That's the key. That's the phrase, marketability checklist, right? So the more things that we have, the more marketable your home is, which means the faster it will sell, which means the more money it's going to sell for. So... Two different scenarios, again, this will work for is an expired, right? And then the second, um, it, it to me, it was, I didn't really work expireds in my real estate business, still don't to this day. But what it really helped me with was communicating to a seller in getting more ingredients in place. So for an example, would be that we went through the process, they said, um, yes, we want to list with you. And but before you go to do the paperwork, you want to get maybe a better price on the home, a list price on the home. OK, so what you're going to do is you're going to go through this and maybe you want some other ingredients to be involved in the listing, like um, a home inspection, pre-inspection, um, home warranty. Maybe you want a lower price or you want a higher commission, whatever the case may be. Right. So you're going to use this tool. This tool is mixed up with a couple other techniques and stuff like that. So hopefully I can fill in um, some other things that you can say, dialogues that you can say, words that you can say that are going to help you secure the listing and get it more marketable or at a higher price. Right. Um, so this is the marketability checklist. OK, chances are wherever you're getting this video, you've got a. Um, a handout. If you didn't get the handout or you don't have it, um, please uh, feel free to reach out to me. I'll send it to you. So when we look at this and we say, all right, so what are the ingredients, right? So um, this to me is something that I would hand them. Um, and then I would go through and say, all right, so which one of these, they're filling this out, okay? But I'm going through each item and line item and I'm explaining it to them. Like below market price, okay? So basically what that means, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, if we looked at everything, we looked at house A and we looked at house B, okay? All things being equal, house A has a below market price versus house B, which is either at market price or in our case of us talking this this evening, you want to do it above market price. Which one's going to sell quicker? Well, yeah, obviously house A is going to sell quicker. So let me ask you, would you be open to listing your home at below market value? And there are some dialogues, which I can't cover in this video, to be able to get the house listed for below market value, which then would create a bidding war and would create um, basically multiple offer situation and typically net the seller more money than they would if they were to list their house at market or worse above market value and then have to reduce the price of the house. It takes longer to do it. You're not going to be in a multiple offer situation. And the chances are that the buyer or the seller is going to have to be more open to negotiations with the buyer. So that's a yes or a no. And it's a big one, right? So a lot of these on this list are either elephants 
or they're gnats, right? Well, what's the difference between an elephant and a gnat, right? Have you ever been bitten by an elephant? Chances are you probably haven't, but you have been bitten by a gnat, and it's typically the little things that get us and not necessarily the big things. So a yard sign, right? That That's probably a gnat. Most people are going to say, yeah, duh, I'm going to put a yard sign in my yard, but there are some people out there that don't want it in there. Whatever the case may be, this one's typically an easy yes. Other financing, right? Seller financing, you know, opening that up for them, chances are they're not going to do that. Um, but again, it, 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 maybe if you got to get creative with things, depending upon what market you're in when you're watching this video, um, that might be an option. Um, and then home warranty, being able to offer home warranty. But the cool thing about this right now is you can talk about the value of a home warranty. And then, um, and then accessibility, you know, again, talking about how we're going to show the house. Um, we typically use a showing service and the showing service is going to reach out to you. Um, and then we talk about, you know, the, the pros and cons, more the pros of using that system and how, how they want to be communicated to. So they're aware of when showings are happening. Um, so accessibility is important. You know, if you got a day sleeper, it's it's important. Again, it's another usually an easy one for them to say yes to. And then move in condition um, exterior, move in condition exterior. And then um, and then if you kind of go down and it says, uh, what does it say? C Seller to complete obvious repairs. So those are kind of all, all kind of the same. But again, it's being able to go through and have that discussion of those items that the seller needs to fix and remedy before you actually put the house on the market or is it an as-is property, right? And then um, pre-ordered appraisal. Again, that's usually a no. But again, if you're looking at a house that's unique, it's in a unique location, it's in, it's kind of a needle in a haystack, you may need to do a pre-ordered appraisal. Who knows? Maybe you pay for the appraisal and they reimburse you when it closes. Um, pre-ordered inspections. A lot of times this is a no. Um, I think it's a good that when you start to go into a market where financing gets a little bit tighter and you're starting to uh, get in government financing where you have FHA, VA, and this house kind of falls in that line. And then you kind of walk around the home again, 25 years of real estate, you see open wiring and you see some red flags that have maybe been red flags in the past. Rather than you trying to be the expert on those things, maybe bring in an expert that can point out those things. Because really, if you were, if you had a house, again, house A, house B, and house A has, you know, below market value, they have, um, uh, they're offering a home warranty, and they did a home inspect, a pre-inspection, and they fixed everything on that pre-inspection, then they have the report sitting there on the uh on the um, kitchen table that most definitely is going to make the house more sellable and then um obviously quick possession you know being able to talk about possession at this point um you know do they have to sell this house to buy the next one you know can they move quicker um that type of thing Did, could they move in with mom if the buyer needs to be able to do that again when when it becomes a buyer's market to where the buyer needs more, wants more concessions, you're going to find that you need to upfront communicate with the seller what those possibly could be. And it's better to talk about it before it happens than when it happens. Um, and then uh, what's the next one there? Appliances and extras included. So being able to leave a refrigerator, leave a washer and dryer, again, those are, I, I think, leaving those things just makes the house more sellable, more turnkey. Um, and then no buy, sell contingencies, duh, right? I mean, on that one. And then lease option, right? What's a lease option? Well, being able to lease the property, no, chances are that's going to be a no, especially if they need the equity from their home. Post-dated price reductions. Now, if you can't get below market price, then here's kind of a trade-off is that, all right, so if the house is overpriced, if it is, um, um, we do 
if the house doesn't sell within that allotted market time, let's say the average market days are 30 and we're at day 31 and the house still hasn't sold and we've done open houses and we've, we've posted it everywhere we could possibly post it, is the seller willing to do a price reduction? And if so, how much is that price reduction? Get it written up in, a, um, in an addendum already, bring those with you, get the seller to sign it, okay? And you don't put a date on it yet, but then you have that communication again in advance. You want to have this conversation because 30 days in, they're starting to think of maybe they didn't hire the right real estate agent. OK, um, in a lot of cases. So you want to make sure that that happens. And then um, let's see above average commission. Ooh, this is a fun one. So being able to talk to the seller um, and asking them and saying, hey, so um, let me let's play real estate just for a second. OK, and let's imagine that you're a hungry real estate agent and you've got five homes to show today. And out of the five homes, uh, um, you know, one of them is at six percent. I mean, you're writing this down. One's at six percent. One's at seven percent. And then three of them are at four percent. Now, let me ask you this. You're a hungry real estate agent. Again, this does not, you don't determine whether or not a buyer is going to fall in love with the house or not, but you determine whether or not you're going to show it, how you're going to show it, and what you're going to say about it in most cases. Um, which one of these um, would you want to, would you be excited about showing? Well, yeah, of course, the 7%. Why? Well, because you're going to make more money. So the idea is, is that if we can make that you and we can highlight that, then we can also market that to real estate agents and emails and uh, making phone calls and stuff like this, that, that they're actually going to make more money when they sell this house. Now, we could also we could put some strings to that, right, that the seller will pay a full priced commission, a 7 percent commission as long as we get a full price offer on the home. Now you could do that and you're going to net some more money. So again, just, just ways of being able to think about um, you, not only you as the agent getting paid more money, but also um, helping the seller and making the house a little bit more marketable. So another one is an odd sales price. Um, I'm not necessarily bought into this one, but there are agents out there that, you know, because we, how we search houses anymore, um, this one isn't as effective as the old days where you would, you know, somebody would get a line item of 20 houses and, you know, they're all priced at, you know, uh, 200,000 or 199,999 dollars or whatever the case may be. An odd sales price would be um, two or 199,776 dollars, something like that. Just makes it stand out a little bit more. And again, all you're doing as a marketer of marketing a home is to draw whatever attention and who knows what ends up selling a house because any one of these by itself could probably um, draw a buyer to it um, versus just all of them at one time. So, um, and then um, seller to pay closing costs. And again, in a shifting market, when it is a buyer's market, we're talking about the 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 potential of a buyer asking the seller to pay their closing costs and a lot of times this is better to bring this up now um, versus waiting until the end and then the last one which is your unique category you can add something on there whatever you would like on there if you're going to use this tool i would um i would extract that one from there but then you're going to total it up and i think in any given market you know, um, you know, you're going to want more yeses than no's to make it marketable. But in the market that we just came out of in 2022, the last three years, I mean, honestly, we didn't need a lot of these things because it was already listed at a below market value. We had low inventory. So this tool really wasn't that necessary. But now that the market is slowing down, now that we are going in transitioning into a buyer's market in most cases, um, we're going to need a tool like this. So I'm hoping that it does help you. And, um, you know, as always, uh, if you need anything, um, please feel free to give me a call at 402-680-7000 or reach out to me at Gary at masterrealestateacademy.com. Again, I hope this helps. 
makes you a little bit more skillful, um, uh, better listing agent if you're working with, with expireds or trying to get um, the house a little bit more marketable. So again, thank you so much for taking the time. We'll talk to you soon.